Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Emmanuel. Today we're going to be learning about property animators. And actually I love this because basically it gives you full control of your animation. You can basically like go back, go forward, you can reverse, you can um, pause, you can just do whatever you want. You have full control, right? So um, we're going to be learning how to do that. And we're going to be learning this using a very simple, basic animation or project. So what we're going to be building is basically this, right? And we basically we're going to have a slider. Okay, so a slider is going to go from zero all the way to one or like the end. And basically, as you slide through the slider, you're going to basically um, affect the animations progress. So usually in like past videos where we worked on animations, you basically press a button and then the animation would execute. Right. But in this video, we're going to do it differently. So rather than pressing a button, we're going to have a slider that is going to determine the state of the animation based off of the progress of that slider. All right. And we're going to be modifying multiple like properties. We're going to modify the um, shape. So it's going to go from a square to a circle. As you can see, it's going to also rotate and it's going to move. And finally, it's also going to affect the background color of the view. All right. So if this is something that you want to see, go ahead, smash the like button. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe. Click the bell icon as well. So you get notified immediately I release videos. And um, yeah, I guess that's it. Let's go into the video. So first of all, just go ahead and create a new project and um, then go over to your main storyboard. And here we have our view controller. So the first thing we want to do is to add our slider. So just hold down command shift on your keyboard and press on L or just go ahead and click on the plus icon right at the top right corner. All right. So we're going to add a slider. So just click on that, click drag, put that right in the middle and hold down control click. And then we're going to select vertical. So it's at the exact center. All right. Then we're going to add constraints to both corners. So this is going to be 20, 20, enter. Beautiful. So now we have that, we can actually go ahead and add the view by just like adding a UI view over here. But I want to do that programmatically. I don't think I've done that in any of my videos. But anyway, we're going to add a UI view programmatically. Okay. So um, we actually need to modify the property of the value of this. So it starts from the beginning. And we can actually just do that by going to the value and setting that to zero. All right. So you can set that to zero here, or you can set it programmatically, whichever one you prefer. So finally, what we need to do is we have to create an IB action for the slider so that we get notified whenever you slide. All right. So just go ahead and pop up your assistant editor. And um, here we're just going to click or hold down control click on the horizontal slider and paste that over there. Oh, oh no, wrong place. So hold down control click and want to paste that over here because we need the action. Right. So here you can just say slider value. Oops changed just like that. All right. Then for the type, you can just go ahead and make sure you select UI slider, right? So value changed again, connect. So um, that's it. We're actually done with our um, storyboard. And now we can jump right into our view controller and do the main thing, right? So the first thing we want to do is we want to create our box or our square. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a private function called um, setup square or set up box, if you will. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually just going to go right at the top and we're going to create a private variable or oh, private var called uh, box view. Okay. And this is going to be of type UI view, right? So basically this is going to be the box that is going to like all the animation is going to be applied to, right? So we have our box view and here we're going to set it up. So we're going to say box view is going to be equal to UI view. And this UI view is going to have a frame, right? So CG rect, and we're going to have the this values. Now for the X position, we want it to start at the extreme left of the um, screen. So just like it should be at the exact extreme left. So we're going to use zero. Now for the Y, we basically want it to be just a little bit on top of our slider. So very close to the center. But um, if we wanted to make this attached to the slider's position, then we just say something like, um, oh, and then we're actually going to need the slider's outlet. But anyhow, let's just work with the center of the screen. So we can just say um, view dot, oops, dot center dot um, the Y position. So this is going to be the views Y center. And then we're just going to subtract um, the height of the box. 
So, and we know that the height of the box, we wanna set that to be like 100. So we're just gonna set that to minus 100. And we're gonna give like a very small padding of like 20 pixels, so just say 20, right? So when we do that, we can go ahead and set the width and the height to be 100 by 100, right? So the size of the box and uh, let's see, did I miss anything over here? All right, pretty good. So now we have set up our, um, what's it called? Set up our, let's actually just move these to different lines so I don't confuse you guys. <laughs> okay, good. So now we have our box set up. The next thing we wanna set is the background color. So just say background color is gonna be equal to, we can just go ahead and use green, okay? Finally, when you create a um, view like this, you have to add it to your um, view. So to do that, just say view dot add sub view and we wanna add the box view. Perfect. So now that we have all of these done, we can go ahead and call setup box over here and let's go ahead and test this to make sure that everything looks good. So basically we expect to see a box at the left side of the screen just on top of the slider view. If we don't have that, then I've done something completely rubbish. All right, perfect. So this is our slider view. So it's just like 20 pixels away from the center. So if you want it, you can move it even higher, but I guess this is pretty good for us. So what we wanna do now is as you slide through, we want to basically apply some animations to this box, okay? Now, to do that, we're gonna be using the property animator. So right at the top, we're just gonna go ahead and create a private var animation. So we wanna create an animation and this animation is gonna be of type UI property UI view property animator and we're sure this is going to be it's going to exist so just go ahead and force this guy now we can of course create another function here say setup animation good and so we have to implement the function so private func um, setup animation and just like that good so here this is where we're going to specify what kind of animations we want to perform good so now the animation is gonna be equal to UI view property animator, as you probably guessed. And we're gonna be taking this option, this option that has this one. So the duration, the curve, and the animations, all right? Now for the duration, it really doesn't matter because we basically want to um, specify or wanna execute the animation based off of the value of the slider. So the duration doesn't exactly matter, but you can just go ahead and for the heck of it, just put one, right? Now the curve, as you probably guessed, is what kind of, um, I can't remember what this is called, but what kind of uh, animation pattern do you want? Do you want it to execute, execute linearly? So you're just moving like a robot with fixed um, uh, velocity, I guess, or you want it to maybe go ease and out, like with gravity and that kind of effect. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and choose ease in out. You can choose whatever you want. Just play around with it if you want. So let's go ahead and move these guys to the next line, just to keep things um, neat. Now, in this block, we need to specify the animations that we wanna perform. I used to, you definitely would have guessed. Um, this is where we want to basically modify. Let's actually start by modifying the um, corner radius, okay? So I'm just gonna say um, self dot, uh, what do we have, um, box view dot layer dot corner radius. And the corner radius, let's go ahead and we wanna, the end result is to have a circle, right? So it means that we wanna set the corner radius to be half the width or half the height since it's a square. So what we're gonna say is the corner radius is gonna be self dot box view, oops, box view dot, um, what am I thinking, what am I thinking? Frame dot width, and we're gonna divide this by two, all right? So this is going to give us a corner radius that basically fits into a perfect circle, all right? So um, now that we have this done, we are almost there. There's one more thing we need to do. Now, because we want to modify this animation to basically execute, but is tied to our own progress, then what we need to do is we're gonna write it in here. We're gonna have to say animation and we're gonna be setting or modifying a property called fraction complete, okay? And then basically, okay, let's go ahead and do this. Then I'm gonna explain what is happening. So fraction complete, we're gonna set sender dot value. So this is going to be the value of the slider. And if you look over here, you're gonna see that the values of type float, but the fraction complete expects a value of type CG float. So we're gonna have to cast this 
as a CG float. So just go like this and write CG float like that. All right. Good. Now, what the heck is happening over here? First of all, let's run this. Let's make sure it works. Then we explain. So just click on your running or command R and um, blah, blah, blah. Oof. Good. So now we have this and I'm just going to slide and you can see that the animation is actually executing. And when you let go, like I'm no longer like holding down the mouse or anything, you can see that it actually just stopped in position. But like in our past videos, you notice that whenever you try to add or execute an animation, when you click on a button, it executes. It doesn't do any kind of pause or anything in between, right? But with this um, fraction complete parameter, um, we were basically able to say, hey, I want you to set the frame of or the um, progress of the animation to be this exact point, right? Now, um, just think of it like this. Let's say you have a sequence of events. Imagine that you are a god and you basically know what happens at every sequence, like for example, everything that happens from now to the end of the year, you know all of those things. Then you say, okay, um, I want to go to 4th of July or I want to go to 27th of May, whatever kind of random date you want to go to, you just go ahead and go there. And because I already know what the animation is going to look like, I'm able to basically put it in perspective. Like I can basically just put, put it in the screen. And that's exactly what is happening here. So when you set an animation like this, you basically, the system already knows what position or what point that animation is going to be at for every point of the, of like the duration of the animation, right? So basically in this case, it knows that at maybe 0 0.5 seconds, the um, corner radius, since it's trying to get to half of the width at um, half of the time, it's going to be um, 50% or it's going to be in our case 50. So it knows what the value is going to be at every fraction time. So uh, basically what we're doing here now is we're saying, I want you to always manually select the frame to display, the animation frame to display, but I want you to select this value based on the value of the slider, right? Now the value of the slider goes from zero to one. This one goes from zero to one. So they basically align. But if you had like um, maybe values that are like zero to two or 200, then you definitely have to do your math to make sure that you convert that into like zero to, to zero to one. Okay. But that's basically what is happening here. The value gives us, a, a, the slider gives us a value from zero to one. And at every point in time, we basically want to set the animation progress of our animations to be at that exact point, right? So that's basically what is happening here. Now you can see how lovely that is. You can just go ahead and run this again so you see. So um, again, just come here and you can see if I were to just slide this guy, it goes. Now if I go all the way to the end, you can see that the animation is completed, right? And you can actually just reverse and you don't have to do any kind of additional um, computations or if you, unless you're good at math and just love math. But if you don't, maybe like me, huh, then you can just go ahead and like leverage the complex work that's happening in the background, right? So this is awesome. So what we're going to do next is we're just going to, like I promised, we're going to modify the rotation so that as you are work, working with the um, slider, it's going to move from the left to the right and also rotate, right? Now for us to do the rotation, just come over here again. We're just going to say self.boxview.transform. And this is going to be equal to self.boxview.transform, oops, dot transform dot um, rotated by this property over here and we're going to rotate by pi all right so this is going to rotate the box and we can just go ahead and run this and we're going to try um, basically confirm that it's going to rotate the box but this time it's going to rotate it on the spot so let's see we're moving and it's rotating box like this and go like that like that perfect so now we want to move this box from left to the right so how do we do that? You can see that basically we're just adding animations as simply as you can think of. So box view dot, and this time we want to be modifying the position. So we're going to say dot frame dot um, origin dot X. So we want to modify the, the X axis position. And this is going to be equal to self dot view dot um, frame dot uh, width. So we want the width of the view and we're going to subtract it by the 
width of the box so that when it goes to the end, it doesn't go outside of the bounds, but just stops right in place. So the width of the box is 100. You can just write it like that. And now if we go ahead and run this, now we should have the three animations executing together. And uh, just go ahead and slide this. Okay, so it's moving, 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 moving. And boom. so you can see that the final stop is the exact end, right? And you can basically just go back, you can just go back and just play around with the animations, right? And this is pretty good, pretty good. Now, finally, the last thing I promised you was uh, the background color so you can not just um, like modify the views properties, but you can actually modify the properties of whatever you want to. So view the um, background color and this, we're gonna go from, we're gonna go to, uh, let's go to black, I think. So just go ahead and run this. And you can see that I didn't even have to specify like an initial value to go back. I didn't have to keep track of what the initial value was. This does it automatically. So just go there, click, and you can see that the background color changes like this, like that. Oops. Awesome, so beautiful, dark mode. And on this note, I'm actually in my next video, I'm gonna teach you how we can uh, build um, apps to basically support um, your light and dark mode. So not just building like one color application, but also support the dark mode, because man, I love that mode. So that's what we're gonna be doing in the next video. So, you know, click on the red bell or the bottom so you get notified. All right, so this is Property Animators and um, you can actually do a whole lot more with this. You can do whatever kind of animations you want, but just think whenever you want to have like an interactive kind of animation that can be intercepted, interrupted, reversed or whatever, this is just amazing, right? So um, if you have questions, definitely go ahead and put it in the comment section and I'll definitely respond. If you found any kind of value in this video, go ahead and smash the like button for the algorithm, I guess. <laughs> Then um, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. So until then, you guys, you stay blessed. Yay!